Hi, this is L from elbowpepper.com and today I've got some bad news. This morning I woke up and checked the forecast and even though I'm in zone 6 in the Pittsburgh area and it's May 22nd, the forecast says danger of frost. So what's that mean? Well, it could mean disaster for all of those summertime plants that I've already put outside. My beans, my corn, my summer squash, tomatoes, peppers. Uh, if it really does frost right here in my backyard, that's going to be a problem. Now, May 22nd, why would I be worried about frost at this point in the year? First, let me show you some sites that I've been checking out regularly to keep an eye on things that are going on. Um, and maybe these are sites that can even help you so you can monitor what you want to do and plan things you're planting and when you want to start your seeds in the spring. A lot of people are familiar with weather.com, but let me show you this site that I really like. This site is called Weather Underground and the URL to it is wunderground.com and I just think that this site's so much cooler than the old weather.com. When you look here at the top I have this advisory, frost advisory, letting me know that I better check and see what's coming up and what's going on. And something I really like about the forecast that they do here on this site is they have an actual line graph that is updated all the time and you can just follow right along by by the hour and see what the weather has been doing at the local monitoring stations and what it's anticipated or projected to do showing all the peaks and valleys, the highs, the lows and when I look at what's coming up for tonight into early morning tomorrow it dips down to 40 even 39 at one point it had said so that tells me I better take some precautions if I want to do everything I can to avoid losing all of these plants that I've started. And that, in combination with that frost advisory listed up above, is what I'm paying attention to, and uh, that's what kind of keys me in. Now, of course, right away, I'm sure you're, you're thinking to yourself, 40 degrees. I thought that water freezes at 32 degrees, and you're right. Um, the actual temperature needs to get down lower than 40 degrees for there to be a danger of any type of frost. But that's the thing. Just because it's some weather station somewhere, it may say that the temperature is this or that. That doesn't mean in your backyard it's that exact same temperature. It could be a little bit colder where you are. And even though the forecast says that it's going to be 40, whenever it actually comes right down to it, it could be several degrees colder than what they thought it was going to be. And then too, where is the temperature actually being taken? What's the height of those devices that are taking the readings? As you go closer down towards the ground, all the cold air tends to settle because it's denser and it's heavier, and so you can have some very cold pockets of air that are settling right at the ground level where your plants may be. And although it's registering at a slightly higher temperature wherever those gauges are, it could be a couple degrees colder at ground level where your plants are. So if you see something that says frost advisory and you have those sensitive plants that are more of the warm weather plants out there already, do something about it. Take some precaution if you can. Looking at frost dates and what you would ordinarily expect, I want to show you um, a pretty cool site that if you're not already familiar with your anticipated frost dates in your zip code, this site can help you out. And I have a link to it from my website. So if you go over to elbowpepper.com and under research there's research links and when you come to the research links, one of the links that I have here is frost freeze dates. And when you go here it takes you to davesgarden.com and you can 
punch in a zip code. So here's the Pittsburgh zip code. And if I put that in, then I get this table of all this information that can help me to do some planning around average or anticipated frost and freeze dates. And you can see here, it gives you a nice little summary based upon that zip code. It says how you're almost guaranteed not to get a frost from May 10th to October 3rd in this zip code. Now isn't that interesting though? Because we're not at May 10th. We're at May 22nd. Let's go back to W Underground and look at one of the cool features that this has. As you check it out, you're going to see so many neat almanac related things uh, showing you things with averages of temperature, precipitation, dew point. But down here under my under but down here under the May calendar view, this actually gives you an ongoing record of what has happened through this month. And look at this, on the 8th of May, the actual temperature two weeks ago was 87 degrees. So two weeks ago on May 8th, when there was still a little bit of a risk of frost, according to the data out there, it was 87 degrees. And now here it is two weeks later in 66 with a danger of frost tonight. So no doubt you have seen yourself how the weather has become more and more erratic and it's harder to plan, it's harder to predict what's going to happen. So being familiar with some of these tools that can help you to monitor what's going on, that can help you to make good decisions as to if you want to take any sort of special precautions um, to protect your plants and not lose them. So maybe these are some tools that have helped you out a little bit but uh, let's look at some quick things that you can do if all of a sudden you look and you maybe you watch the, the news and you hear this forecast, danger of frost, um, what can we do? Let's go outside and check out some things that I'm going to be doing to take some precautions. All right, so you've identified the threat. Now you can take action. First thing that you can do after you've identified those plants that are sensitive to the frost, summer squashes, nightshades, things like that. Then you know what you have to focus on protecting. On the other hand, things like cabbages, kales, spinaches, they would take lesser priority over the other things that I've mentioned. But, what's the first thing that you can do? Well, if you have plants that are in containers, especially ones that are relatively small, maybe seedling trays, the easiest thing is to just put those inside. Take them indoors overnight. So simple. Put them in a garage and some shelter and that's a whole bunch of plants you don't have to worry about. Next, you can look for things that you can use to cover up your plants. Now maybe you don't have anything fancy, but you may have just some basic buckets lying around. Just putting a bucket over a single plant upside down that can do a lot to protect it and if it's windy you can put a little brick or something to to weight it there that way the wind doesn't blow it over if you have some slightly bigger containers maybe uh, these kind of nursery pots these are great because they actually have holes in them which can help to allow the plant to breathe while still giving it a nice protection from the frost so I like these too maybe you have some tarps lying around in a pinch a tarp or even maybe a bed sheet can do a lot to help out. With tarps and with sheets of plastic, if you're resorting to using those, it's ideal if you can keep them off of the plant. You could have some posts or some sort of cages or something in place to help to hold that covering, the plastic, the tarp, above the plants to avoid touching the actual foliage of the plant and that's going to give you the best results if you're using something like that. Um, you could even use totes. I actually bought this just for the purpose of being able to cover plants and it's come in handy for other things too. Like holding some of these materials. Burlap. Burlap is a great way to protect plants even throughout the entire winter. People will use burlap 
to wrap plants and protect them from the bitter cold. It allows the plants to breathe. It can be in direct contact with the foliage and the plant itself. And yet it does give you that extra protection. So if you have some burlap, use that. If you don't, get some now. That way you'll be prepared for later on when you need it. This is uh, the burlap that I got. I got it from Lowe's and I'll have the link at the bottom of the video. But I also got these, which I'm gonna show you next. And these have come in handy too. They're designed specifically for your plants. They're different from a tarp. This is more of a kind of a cloth, fabric-y type of a feel. Um, it allows the plant to breathe, air can pass through it, and yet it's also very effective at protecting against frosts. So I'm going to be using a couple of these where I can, and these can actually cover a really nice area. So I'm gonna get all this stuff laid out and I'll show you how it looks. I got everything bundled up for the night. Let's look real fast. My ground cherries are under one of these totes, weighted down so the wind doesn't knock it over. I had some PVC framing in place uh, for a cage for my peppers and that helped to make this nice little enclosure here where I was able to use this particular plant covering. This one has a drawstring to help pull it tight along the bottom. A little bit of some burlap here with some of these cool little clamps. And let's look at the other side of the property. Okay, let's look at what we have over here. I have some spaghetti squash seedlings under a couple buckets. Maybe you've seen this stuff, which is for frost protection. I thought I'd put that over my carrot seedlings just to be safe. Under here, I have my potatoes. And behind there, my tomatoes. And use one of these upside down for my corn seedlings. So I think that this is all nicely secured. Now right along here, I have some runner beans that I wanted to get going, but I have to protect, so I use some burlap. And they'll be coming up behind this fence here, so I have more burlap. And here too as well. So my beans are covered, my tomatoes, potatoes, spaghetti squash, corn, carrot seedlings, peppers, ground cherries. I have some marigolds back there that I thought it would be best to safeguard them as well. And I've brought in all of the containers that I can bring in, so that's the best I can do. Well, it's getting pretty cold up in here, so I'm going to finish off this video. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Remember, always check your forecast in the spring and in the fall too when there's danger of frost, even when normally there shouldn't be. But you can take some steps to extend your season for your plants and they'll thank you for it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. Don't worry, guy. We got you covered.